Welcome back to Contrast Studios Live. It is your host, Patrick Coyne. I am so excited about our guest today, Jeannie Taggart. She's a member here. I'm not gonna talk for you. What are you about, Jeannie, and what are you passionate about? So I'm a nurse practitioner and I do functional endocrinology here in Cincinnati. Um, my background was an RN. Um, I did bedside nursing, some travel nursing. I taught at the Christ College um, and then went to grad school at UC and graduated in 2022. And I've been studying under Dr. Nalia Goldenberg, who has been doing functional endocrinology for many years. Uh, she's one of very few in the area. And so I've got the pleasure to learn a very niche type of medicine from her. Um, it was my passion to do functional medicine and not to be in a conventional setting. I've always struggled with what conventional medicine is and it's sick care and it's not health care. Um, and so that was my my starting point in endocrinology was where it began. And I didn't realize how much I love hormones because it is literally the orchestra of all body systems that communicates to one another. So it allows you to bring everything together. So you got in it a lot before HRT, TRT, everything got really big into it. So where did you kind of, where did you find your passion for endocrinology and hormone replacement and just the study of hormones? So HRT, so when he's talking about HRT, he's talking about hormone replacement therapy and HRT is great. I don't have a problem with hormone replacement therapy, but there's so much that we fail to see that if you understand what hormones are, you can support hormones. So that's where I like the functional medicine approach to it. If you understand that you need vitamins and minerals to make hormones and you need fats and you need carbohydrates and you need sleep and all these different things, you might not need hormone replacement therapy. So that's why I liked uh, that approach to it. And um, I guess it's, that's kind of how I got into it. I don't know if I answered your question completely of what you asked, but. No, you did. I mean, I, I feel like you're looking at the comprehensive aspect of a human being and how to optimize a human being yep. at a really, really base chemical level. So yes. I know I, I've wanted, I've, I've been picking your brain for a while and I'm very interested in it. So yeah. it's really good to learn where it comes from. It's, it, hormones are so fascinating. If you look at a chart of hormones, and it clicked when I was, I had been doing this for like six to nine months. And I was like, now I understand what a hormone is. It's a molecular structure that moves throughout your body, through your bloodstream, and it communicates some type of signal. It's a messenger. So one can turn into another, but they turn into one another due to atoms. So hydrogen and oxygen and different molecules, uh, vitamin D, zinc, all these different things are important to make them. So when you start looking at improper conversion, you can start to pick up where there is deficiencies or there's too much of something and why you have pathways. So a common one is like PCOS and you have maybe too much testosterone. Well, there's an improper conversion of testosterone to estrogen. So when you start to look at like why that happens, you can support, maybe it's insulin resistance that's causing that. Now we can work on that and we can fix that pathway. Incredible. Mm -hmm. I'm learning right now. <laughs> it's super cool. So in the same breath, speaking about metabolism, kind of carrying over from hormones to metabolism, is how does contrast studio or a contrast session at the studio, how does that help increase metabolism from your aspect? There's so many components walking in that room that would help with metabolism. And it's, it's the biggest thing that I took when I went in there is, so cortisol, your stress response hormone. There's a lot of things happening with that when you go in there. When you get into the sauna, you, A, you're calming your body down. So it's a psychological thing. So you're immediately bringing your like resting heart rate down. You're, you're calming yourself down, even in your mind. So I think it's a very peaceful setting, um, as well as next thing you know, you're burning calories because your basal body temperature is rising. So your metabolism is boosting. You're burning calories in a way that's not stimulatory. Like if you're in the gym and you're running, this is a little bit different. Um, and then you're also detoxing. The more that you detox, the more that you're reducing inflammation. And another thing that I don't think is talked about enough is hormones cannot signal well if you have a lot of inflammation. So if you reduce- That's where the cold comes into place, really reducing the cold. And it quickly, very, very quickly. So the moment you get out of the sauna and then you step into the ice plunge, there's, it's a whole, that's a whole nother game. Like that takes it to another level. 
And I think it also helps to fight in that parasympathetic nervous system, fighting the cortisol driven spike Mm -hmm. before you get into the water, get into the neurotic level, down to the neuron and knowing that we can kind of change those pathways, choosing to do something hard, choosing to do a stressful event that is not detrimental on the central nervous Richter scale. So we're really staying in. That's where that passive workout comes into play that we talk about. Like yesterday, my session in 30 minutes, I burned 357 calories. I weigh 225 pounds. That's awesome. And just, and I've never tracked it. Yes, it was the first time I hit it on my Garmin. Like I said, too much data sometimes is a lot, but to realize <laughs> I burned 350 calories and I leave recharged yep. versus feeling distraught and downridden after a normal really hard workout yeah. makes me really, really happy. So um, it's very, very interesting that you have that. Yeah. When we talk about metabolism, we talk about the stimulus of brown fat. Mm-hmm. Because we know the highest, the highest amount of brown fat is right under our collarbones. And when we get into the water, we are literally stimulating thermogenesis and cold shock proteins because all brown fat does, because we talk about it a lot, is when you get into the water, it spikes and it throws you into the parasympathetic nervous system. So you're either choosing fight or flight. So what that brown fat does in nature is it literally keeps us from getting hypothermic. It, it alleviates it. It activates. That's when the shaking and tremble starting because it's trying to protect your body from getting to a hypothermic stage. So what is the difference from your perspective in your world, the difference between brown fat and white fat? Obviously, one's subcutaneous. The other one is not. One is a bigger energy system. One is not. So without getting into glucose manipulation and things like that, certain foods spike certain insulin levels, et cetera. How important is it from a female perspective to burn brown fat? Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, well, for women, we definitely carry a lot more adipose tissue, I would say, in our midsection. Um, men do too, but women, it's a little bit different. Um, I think that it's harder for us to burn fat in our midsection. So if you can stimulate brown fat, a big thing that women hate is having adipose tissue in their, their belly. Um, but as far as like hormones, is that what you're asking? Like more, more about how brown fat, the end result, what I'm getting to is that with the stimulus and activation of brown fat, my favorite thing is the passive workout of contrast. So you are literally burning calories at rest yeah. because your metabolism is spiking. And I think it's very important that people realize when they leave and they get out of the plunge is they feel super, super, super hungry. Yeah. Your metabolism spiking. So what, what's kind of going on in layman's terms when the people feel a massive amount of hunger when they get out. Is that from the nervous system? Is that from the activation of brown fat from your perspective? Why do you feel so hungry when you leave the plunge? Hmm. Um, you know, I don't have, this is just going off of like what my base knowledge would be of it. Um, you're hungry because your body is clearing up glucose. So insulin is surging. Insulin is cleaning up glucose, trying to store it into cells. Um, and the fact that you're hungry, I would think is more so that your metabolism is sped up and now your body is demanding of calories to replace that. I just enjoy talking at a cellular level when I tell people the metabolism burning. That's actually what's happening. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Leading into our next question is, how does the sauna work when it comes to calorie burn and detoxification? Because we've talked about what happens when you walk in, but what is actually happening to burn calories and to also detoxify the skin at the same time and our body? So these saunas, which I learned about when I first started coming here, are mm-hmm. a little bit different than if yep. you go to the Y and you step into a room that's just hot. Like, mm-hmm. yes, you're going to sweat in those rooms, but these saunas with the infrared light and the way that it, it actually penetrates the object and mm-hmm. it causes it actually causes more toxins to pull out of your system. And detox pathways, uh, there's a lot of them. So you have your liver, you have your gut, and then you have your skin. So as you push toxins out of the skin through your pores, you're removing a lot of things that can inhibit. Um, another really cool thing is that toxins will impair the receptor sites. So hormones have to bind to a receptor. If you have a lot of toxins in your body, mm. heavy metals, mold, there's so many different things. If there's too much toxic burden, you're not gonna have good signaling and you're not gonna have good binding. So the more that we detox, the better our hormones will work. And just being a really good vasodilator, yes. giving the opportunity for the body to pump more blood through it is a yes. good thing. Blood flow and stimulation is a very good it's huge. thing. It's huge. That's why exercise is so important. But this is an interesting way to exercise with no movement. Yeah, it's just to flip on exercise. And what people don't realize, or at least not in our world of wellness, is 
working out is just like taking care of i have a baby at home taking care of a crying baby it's a stress mm -hmm. it is an external stressor if that stress has nowhere to go to be used to energy it now basically spikes insulin cortisol everything in our body that we don't need so people understanding that you are implementing a new stressful routine in your life it doesn't have to be that negative of a stress you can feel positive with a a very high on the Richter scale and the central nervous system with stress and still be better at handling stress, but also moving forward in your life with a basically a new outlook on working out. I think it's really, really yeah. interesting. We've seen, we're a new business. We've seen so many people that have come in talking about waist loss, getting in, getting tighter, feeling a lot more rested, feeling more energy at the same time. So I think it's very interesting. And clarity. I think that's a huge one too. That is my favorite part because clarity I think comes from the plunge. Yes. So what happens to our body um, at a very base level when you do step into the plunge? Your nervous system is trying to regulate when you step mm -hmm. in. You have your sympathetic and your parasympathetic and you touched on it, but sympathetic is your fight or flight mm -hmm. and we're animals. So at one point we were running from bears and that's yep. how we stayed alive. Um, and so you have vasoconstriction and you have your body kind of slowing certain things. Uh, and then when you get in there and you really have to work through it mentally and try to flip your body into parasympathetic and you do, once you get into that, your body can relax, you vasodilate and now your body can, um, you're going to start breathing better. Um, but on, I'm not sure if I answered your question on what you're asking when you step in. Remind me of what, what was the key point that you, you wanted you me to- You answered it exactly is, it, I think the word you used is most important is the choice. Yeah. The choice versus putting people into stressful situations like a work environment. You have no option. You have to continue to do it even if you don't want to. Correct. Even if your brain is fighting. You have to choose to relax. That singular choice to relax, which in tune, like I said, is creating new neural pathways. The next yes. time a stressful situation arises, your brain is already ready for the stress yes. because you've implemented a very passive way to handle stress better. And I can't overstate that enough. Stress is good. Mm -hmm. I think we've, there's a culture of stress is so bad, but yep. stress is actually great for our bodies. It's mm -hmm. learning how to manage it. And this is a great way to teach you how to do it. Couldn't agree more. That's why it's so big in the recovery and the mental health aspect of it. And again, I've been off medication because of that. Now I'm making a claim that that's what's worked for me. Uh, again, I cannot say that's going to work for everyone, but for myself, it's helped me regulate my anxious energy to a standpoint of where I've gotten off anxiety medicine, ADHD medicine. That's amazing. Can't say that's going to work for everyone, but for me, my brain has somewhere to go. It knows what to do, whether that's the breath or the singular focus of just the water. It's really helped me calm my life down. I love that you talk about that because yeah. there is so much right now with mental health and medications and there's nothing wrong with taking a medication mm -hmm. if you need it. By all means, please do. But I think that we failed to realize how resilient our bodies are. 100%. And there's so many tools and something like this and nutrition and sleep. and there's Or medication before understanding where the problem's deriving from. There we go. Right? Root. Like find the problem and the issue and then dictate medicine, medicine medication, um, therapy. All those things work. I've done yeah. therapy. But this is the one thing where I don't have an external source telling me how to handle my stress. It's incredible. What do you think it is that has helped with not being on medication? With I this? could get down to the scientific level, but choosing a very hard, a very, very stressful and hard event in my daily life that I'm choosing to do. Working out, yes, but that's inherently who I am. Yes. Doing stressful business meetings and, and working on scaling and, and moving business in a positive direction. That's inherently who I am. I am not inherently someone who wants to work on the emotional aspect of my life. Fair enough. I'm too busy, right? Yeah. So for me, it forces me into the emotional state. It has nothing to do with work. It has nothing to do with anything that I'm running towards. It slows me down to where when I'm outside of work, I've already gotten that massive, I don't want to get into the what steps out of the cold, but yeah. it's given me grounds to where I can put my feet in the ground and I have somewhere to go in my brain versus mm. just letting it run like a Ferrari. Right. It just hits the pause button on me. You have to kind of face it. I have to, or my life um, isn't as positive as it would be without Contrast Studio. That's just a fact. That's why we started the business. It's so cool. So I know your favorite part. Um, I have two more questions and we're wrapping up. <laughs> but 
I know your favorite part is what happens when you step out of the plunge. Mm -hmm. So give some of our viewers some insight of what happens when you step out of the plunge. I think the first time I did it, you were sitting out here and I came out and you asked me how it was. And I was like, that was wild. And pupils were dilated. Yeah, I, I got out and I'm like, that was, you know, the whole experience is amazing. But the moment you step out of the plunge and you mm. feel it's it's kind of like a, um, a rush, your body is releasing all this dopamine and adrenaline and the way that it is trying to re-regulate to the external temperature from being really cold to being back to like room temperature, that whole process and what your body does is that's where all of the, all the magic is made. Yes. And, um, that's why we don't end on hot. That's why you have to yes. regulate your own body temperature and warm yourself back up versus I know there's some people in contrast and watching this that have snuck back into that sauna. You don't want to do, do not rob yourself of those benefits. But that's also why I think I had said something about a shower afterwards. And I was like, mm -hmm. Hey, what about taking a sh there? And it was explained. You don't want to actually do that because you're going to rewarm your body temperature back up and the benefits of burning brown fat happen from stepping out from being cold and then letting your body re-regulate itself and all the neurotransmitters, all the hormones mm -hmm. that are being released and your body getting back to baseline is where the beauty happens. And you're doing it, not an external source. Exactly. Not a cortisol pill, not saying cortisol pills are bad, but nothing you're doing is outside of your own regulation, which I think is so important that the human is more resilient and that we can fix ourselves, we not can. always use an external source. We can. The last question of my most favorite question, you're a member here, we, we have, you add value to the space, we love you. What has Thank contrast you. done for you? And how do you feel about the space itself? Because you've spent time in here yeah. without microphones and lights and everything, yeah. right? How, how has contrast added to your life? And again, what is kind of your conceptual view of the space when you walk in? So I love how calm it is. Um, and this is an interesting thing. I love how it smells in here. Mm, yeah. So there's a lot of sensory. Shout out to Hoka Collections. We need a sponsorship. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Mm. It smells great when you walk into the room. This, you know, and the staff is amazing. They always greet you and make you feel like you're just very seen, like they know you're your friend. Um, and then going into the room, it's so calming. Do you like that it's private? I love that. I absolutely love that because for me, I um, I'm a believer, and so when I get into the sauna, it's a time for me to to pray and mm. like some people may meditate some people may do something else but when i get in there that's my time to talk to god so it's a moment that i don't have my phone i can't wear my watch i can't have you know patients or whatever contacting me and i get to be just there yeah so it's there's a lot of things that happen but when you get in there and um i think too when you look at health and you look at hormones and you look at a lot of things it's not just physical it's not just what you eat it's not just what you do but so much of it has to do with your psychological. Uh, so spirituality and, and psych is huge when it comes to what your hormones do. So this is not just hot and cold. There is more there that mm. I love because I think that you're taking time to sit with yourself and to do something that you probably wouldn't do because we're so busy. Yep. So that's 20 minutes that you're, you have to disconnect. And I think for me, that might be my favorite part is because I'm forced to. No, it makes me really, really happy. I spend, um, and I've posted about it, but I spend my time after the plunge. It's the third time I hit my knees. So I hit my knees in the morning, Love it. midday and at night. Love it. And my post plunge meditation prayer affirmations is probably one of my favorite times of the day. What's your favorite time to plunge and to contrast, to sauna and contrast? Probably in the morning. So do you, do you, you like the huge dopamine adrenaline first thing in the morning? Yeah. So I personally... I love it midday because okay. I'm running two businesses. I'm a father and a husband. It gives me that jolt midday to go be the best version of myself after meditation, after prayer. And there's nothing you're really worried about after getting out of 39 to 40 degree water. <laughs> you feel great. You, yeah. You're ready to go. You're a rocket ship on the way up. So that's a good point. Thank you so much for your time. Thank, thank you, you so much for me. what you do on an individual basis for people and for yourself. And then thank, thank you. you for being a member. We appreciate thank you. you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. It's been awesome.